Carl and Liam here from Games, Brains and Headbang Live, GBHBall.com for short. Getting Goosebumps Season 2 as well. Getting our way into it now. Up to Go Eat Worms. Directed by Steve DiMarco and written by Rick Drew. Book number 21 of the original book series. I will warn you now, if you don't like creepy crawlies, in specific, specifically Worms, there's a lot on this that might actually make you feel a tad uncomfortable. Because mm. they are used a lot. Earl Stan's got a thing about worms, I think. <laughs> he touches yeah, on you'll it. Even copy, on you'll even copy one of his earlier, one of the earlier ideas in another story here, mm. you know? Yeah. But I actually really like this episode. I thought it was strong, and I think it's ending, barring one part, is really fucking good. Yeah, it's like one of those episodes that if you hear the concept about it, you 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 are just like, oh, that sounds really stupid. But actually, it's got some it's got some clever like things that it's playing with. Uh, yeah, oh, cool. It actually is saying something for the first time yeah. in a while. It is saying something about environmental damage. Exactly. I think it has a pretty interesting metaphor and some message in there that yeah, quite interesting. We begin focusing on a book called Worm World, then cut to a mass of pulsating worms that I initially was like, oh, haven't they just cut that? From I from state of the basement. I thought yeah. they cut it, but later mm -hmm. I, I would see afterwards that's the pulsating worm that's in his dirt in the basement, not from mm -hmm. that previous episode. Yeah. We then get our first bit of grossness as we see a young boy just dissecting mm -hmm. a worm, and the camera cuts, and it's just up close to the dissected worm. So if you don't mm -hmm. like that shit, you're straight away like, oh, you know. Yeah. Worms are nature's perfect creatures. They aerate the soil, recycle waste, and they, and they gross out girls when you drop them down their backs. Come on, Danny. And he's talking about he's talking about the amazing abilities of worms. So get used to this. It is another Goosebumps trope. A kid that's obsessed with one specific thing. Mm -hmm. They love that. <laughs> they do love it. This is Todd and his friend Danny. They want to win the first prize at the science fair by proving worms can survive just about anything. Uh, Todd's methods disgust Danny, but Todd says worms can't feel anything. And mm. it's like, I don't know how true that is. Yeah. <laughs> Reggie, his sister, comes down and we get the usual sibling bickering. Yay! It's here. Just start having shots, I think, for these uh, tropes, man. <laughs> <laughs> Considering we record these in batches of about seven episodes in a row, <laughs> we'd be fucked by the end. <laughs> well, the last one would be quite interesting, then, wouldn't yeah. it? <laughs> She claims her science project is going to win the life cycle of a robin. And a plaster version is hanging in the corner of the basement. She goes to get it and take it down, but worms fall out of its mouth all over her. The robin also drops on the floor and breaks. Basically, you straight away like, oh, Todd's a dick. There's mm. no need for this. Everything. Must have been something it ate. Reggie runs upstairs, very upset, and swears revenge on Todd. I will have my revenge. <laughs> yeah, one thing I'll note is that I um I thought it was quite interesting because we always get their sibling rivalry, but usually it's from the perspective of the person who has getting the pranks played upon them, or they've got the the sibling is one bothering our main character kind of thing. Yep. Whereas this it kind of mixes it up at least, whereas like our main characters are actually the, the dicks that are like bothering the other siblings. So it's kind of like a bit of a change at least. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. I would actually argue that Reggie isn't the problem here. Todd is. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The two boys are very impressed with their work. They're all like, yeah, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want you pair of pricks. Yeah. <laughs> well, we then see a couple of worms in the worm farm. They come out of the dirt and they look around. I love the effect. I love the mm. fact that it looks a little cheap, but it's yeah. not CGI and it looks cool. I like it. Yeah, there's some, some decent effects in this that you can see they put in actual like, effort, you know? Yeah, we'll get to one at the end that I was generally blown away by. Mm -hmm. We also know that the worms are looking around as we get a POV shot from the worm's perspective, looking at Todd and Danny. And again, mm -hmm. I was impressed. I was like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, definitely. The next day at school, Todd and Danny are still congratulating themselves on scaring Reggie. And I'm like, good God, guys, I wasn't that good. 
No. <laughs> They're in the cafeteria now. Danny has a sandwich and Todd has last night's spaghetti. They agreed to trade. Can you see it coming, people? Can you see mm -hmm. it coming? As they go to eat, Todd continues to talk about the worm experiments. Danny gets a nice fork full of spaghetti and we see it has a worm in it. And I was like, okay, he's going to put it up to his mouth, see the worm, freak out, and Reggie's going to get the blame. No, he puts it in his mouth. There's <laughs> something died in there. Oh, gross. Is this supposed to be funny? I didn't do it. He actually <laughs> put it in his mouth. He yeah, that's out. funny. Yeah. I was like, damn, man. <laughs> An extra actually did that in the, in the show. That's quite interesting. But I did get Carly Beth flashbacks. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, you got the, like you said, the worms on the bed and stay out of the basement. You got the Carly Beth eating the worm sandwich. Yep. Now, a whole episode about worms, man. Uh, this is sounding like another uh, thing going on here with our Austin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Um, Danny then sees more worms in his food, accuses Todd of doing it. Todd obviously denies it. And Danny walks off saying, look, we're not friends anymore. I like this because I like the fact that we actually get a friend going, you know what, You're, I, I, I'm blaming you, you're the obvious culprit, and I'm pissed off about it, we're not friends anymore. Like that's yeah. not the whole, oh yeah, it's okay kind of thing. It's not okay. Yeah. Uh, mm. But the obvious culprit would be Reggie, and Todd goes for that one. At home, Todd's mother goes into his room to find that he is obsessed with work, <laughs> or posters, toys, drawings, books, and she is rightfully a bit worried. Yeah, I also put that. I put down the. I thought the mom's reaction to his um, worm almost shrine room was like quite hilarious. She was kind of like horrified, and like, like you said, it's not unjustified, really. You know it reminded me of it. Reminded me of where Ace Ventura when they go in <laughs> Einhorn's yeah. um, room, and it plays that sinister music as they look yeah. around and see the shrine to Dan. Todd, Todd, are you in here? No wonder I don't get in here more often. It's gotten worse. Yeah, I mean, if my child, if my child was obsessed with worms and I walked into a room like that, I don't know, I think I'd be pretty creeped out, so, to be honest. <laughs> um, Todd then jump scares her from behind, claiming he thought she was Reggie. Oh, sorry, Mum, I thought you were Reggie. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Penny, man. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Todd blames Reggie for the worm for the incident but his mother is dismissive she tells him that she has to fix her he has to fix the robin for her and they do this thing about lawyer talk so I guess his mum's a lawyer as Todd makes a crack about it and she has to tell like they do the whole jury judge thing and she tells him he has to fix the rope he has to fix the robin or there's no sites fair so there's the definitive part mm -hmm. cool in the basement, we see the worms are now free and appear to be traveling up a vent into his room as he is asleep. Nice. He rolls over in his sleep. My God, the bravery of these people, these kids. I forgot yeah, true. He rolls over in his sleep to reveal worms are under his head. And then we get the bravest bit as he rolls back face first into these mm. worms. And he lies there for a good few seconds before waking up, pulling the covers up to reveal... Worms are all over his legs and feet. Now, I don't mm. have much issue with worms, but I ain't doing this shit. I ain't put my yeah. face in them. Yeah, this is one of the ones I'd love to see, like a behind the scenes shot of how they managed to get it done kind of thing. Because, mm. yeah, it's definitely very brave of the actor to, to do that, especially as being so young and like yeah for sure good shit man it's good shit i was i was basically quite on board with this episode mm -hmm. his cries brings his mother in and he accuses reggie again but reggie isn't here and basically she's not here Mom, his, her, her, the mother's like well look man this worm shit's getting out of control you're bringing to bed with you now you weirdo mm -hmm. she tells him to clean up and goes back to bed even uh, or while he does the usual, usual, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. Mate, no one's going to believe you. That's how this shit works on Goosebumps. No one's believing you. Never. The next day at school, he tries to make it up to Danny, who's still pissed. And I like that as well. Danny's like, like, I'm still not happy about this. 
But he ends up relenting and believes Todd when Todd blames Reggie. And I'm like, yeah, okay, you know what? You are friends. You would get over this. And you'd be like, okay, it probably was Reggie. And it's cool. And I like the transition. They kind of just go from angry with each other just to back to, look, what are we going to do kind of thing? Mm -hmm. That's kind of how kids' fights often weren't. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Todd tells them his revenge plan. And guess what? It involves worms. Of course. <laughs> so he hasn't apparently learned the lesson and says he's going to di- go and dig some fresh ones tonight. He's going out tonight to dig some fresh ones. Probably unnecessary. He's got quite a few. Does he really need fresh ones? No. <laughs> then somewhere else, we see Todd confronting Reggie and her friend, but she denies it. As she says, he's got worms on the brain. Worms yeah. on the brain. Sometime after, he arrives home and gets his worm digging gear as we see worms are watching him again. He does actually seem to get noticed, like, you know that whole thing where you feel like you're being watched? It seems like he gets that vibe. Yeah. Back over, they've gone back under the soil, so he can't see anything. Quick cut again, as later it's dark and he's worm hunting. A storm picks up and he's happy. He's really happy about it as the rain will bring them to the surface. Mm. I'm, I'm cool with that. That's, off, that's what happens. But we then get a very dark set of scenes that make it a bit hard to follow, I think, particularly the mm-hmm. end of this sequence. Uh, yeah. There are some cool shit in it. Basically, he falls into a pit and into an underground tunnel. Cool. Down with this. Mm-hmm. As he looks around, something loud makes the tunnel shake. Ton- Todd wonders where he is. He starts to look for a way out. And as he goes in deeper, we see he's being watched by words, like throughout the tunnel. So you know he's leading up to something quite cool. He ends up coming across a message on the wall that says, Todd, we will make you squirm. Oh, mm. like, okay. That, that would scare the shit out of me. Yeah. <laughs> and at the end of the message, there's a worm, which appears to still be writing it. So I guess, it, I don't know, it, we're using its body. is writing yeah. on the wall. Yeah. Don't know how, but it's cool. But he looks down at his feet and sees he's ankle deep in worms and is now unable to move. As he struggles, he falls backwards into them and freaks out. I got a fucking um, Indiana Jones and the (laughs) Temple of Doom vibe here, man. Yeah. (laughs) But he frightly freaks out. And look, this is what, I mean, it might not be completely layered with worms, but the top Mm. layer is worms. And like, he's lying backwards in it. They got a lot of worms for this episode, (laughs) for sure. Well, they just borrowed them from R.L. Stein and his previous fucking, presumably, worm farm he has for his stories. Maybe that's it. Maybe he's a worm farm connoisseur, man. Who knows? He gets up, runs, and ends up meeting a giant worm. (laughs) That starts Mm -hmm. to chase him. Now, it is quite dark here. I do think it's a bit too dark. And I get it. You kind of want to hide the effect because it is a practical effect and you kind of see its body more than anything else. So I get why they've gone dark and I do appreciate that, but I think it might be too dark at times because I generally got a bit lost and had to rewatch a part because I couldn't work out where we'd gone from the worm to him leaving because it was Mm. so dark. Yeah. Yeah, so basically when I went back, I noticed that he starts to climb out. He finds a slope that leads out and the big worm gets hold of him. And I think the effect's really, really good. Like, it looks like yeah. a big worm. Yeah, just the fact that they built this giant, like, worm, like, pros- like um, effect, you know, like, that's some effort there, so you can't really fall, you know? Yep, absolutely. Um, and I, I like, it gave me the idea was, oh, these tunnels are worm tunnels for the big worm, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's, like, made them with his body, yeah. But he's saved by somebody. Like, he's crawling out, and he's saved by someone. But they fuck up here. Mm. I have no idea I have no idea what happens because the cut is so quick so Mm. quick that I actually went frame by frame trying to pause it to work out what actually happens but you can't see it it's near pitch dark and you cannot see it the best I could go is someone grabs his hand but Mm. there's there's no one there for what follows in the scene no one was helping him oh really didn't notice that 
Hmm. It's it's a no. terrible thing, and I don't understand it. I don't get it because pausing it frame by frame did not reveal it. You go from he's caught by the worm, struggling, mm-hmm. to then just pulling himself out. Oh, that sucks. I guess they just couldn't think of an idea of how he would like escape logically. So it's yep. like cut it. <laughs> yeah, because the worm goes back under the ground, and we see Reggie is nearby. But here's the thing: she's carrying the robin, and it implies that the robin is what scared it off. And I was like, okay, that's clever. Big bird, big worm, fine. Hud, what are you up to? Nothing. I'm telling you, there's a giant worm down there and that bird scared it away. Stay away from my robin. Come on, Beth. Except this is one of those convenience moments. Why would Reggie be there late at night? Mm, That's true. Unless you were like following him or something, I have no idea. But she doesn't need, she would she doesn't know anything about big worm. She she doesn't he's like, did you see it? She doesn't know it. So she's not the one that helped him. It's mm. just a bit messy. It's a messy scene, unfortunately. And yeah. it takes a little bit away from the sort of plot point of the big worm. But it's a minor complaint because I still think the episode's strong and we're getting to probably the coolest part. Obviously, Todd is grateful, but of course they don't believe his story. Whoever does, uh. <laughs> Todd goes home and packs all his worm stuff up. He's done with them. He clears out his worm farm and declares the house worm free. This is one of those times where you can actually go, yeah, you'd be giving up worms after this. Very true, you would. Mm -hmm. Later, he's painting the robin as the mother comes home and points out the removal of the worm stuff. She tells him to come watch a video with them, but his experience is weird here. We do Mm. a weird thing in Goosebumps. He says no and it focuses on his face as he almost has like a vietnam flashback of like his wormy experience and i'm like oh are we doing psychological damage in goosebumps wow you think he would have it wouldn't you after what he just experienced <laughs> but apparently not because sometime later he and danny are going fishing and danny is shocked that he's given up on worms he then throws the worms he has into the water before declaring that minnows make great bait and you can mm-hmm. kind of already see where we're going here one is dropped and lands in the water and we get a POV of the minnow as Dodd Todd declares that minnows are stupid and they don't feel a thing. And I'm like, dude, you didn't learn shit. How about we do something with fish? Not a bad idea. When you think about it, fish really are nature's perfect creatures. <laughs> That's what you said about worms. I know, but fish are way better. They've been around for millions of years. I mean, they can breathe underwater. Survive under polar ice caps or in tropical heat. The pair are talking up the greatness of fish and using them now in a science project. Once again, Todd's idea involves torture, and Danny <laughs> does point out the cruelty of it, but Todd Pat declares that fish can't feel a thing. This kid <laughs> needs to take science classes. Like, well, he's an idiot. He's going to get his comeuppance, isn't he? So We then get hilarity. As he goes to eat a sandwich, and we see, as he goes to eat a a line is in it <laughs> and he gets dragged into the water and I was laughing. I was, it was so <laughs> painful. Fish, nature survivors. I'm gonna have a bite of your sandwich, okay? My sandwich? I thought it was your sandwich. <laughs> oh! ah! And it was so funny as we see him like from his POV getting dragged <laughs> through the water and I'm like, oh, that's such a great ending. And Mm. they fuck it up. Mm. They fuck it up because we hear Todd's bubbly voice talking to the fish, apologizing, and then being let go and him being like, oh, you're going to make me swim back? I'm like, oh, man. Why would you not just end it with him being dragged off? Yeah, she just cut it there. But they always have to add in like some silly thing in the end, I guess, just to try and lighten it or something. But It's that, isn't it? It's to lighten it. Yeah, they don't want to have it to be so so dark that, my God, he just got dragged off and drowned, you know? i like, no, he's okay. He's okay, kids. Don't worry. Yeah, exactly that. He'll be fine. He's learned his lesson. But this is a top episode. Um, yeah. This was fun from beginning to end. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think after this episode, we can all agree that worms are pretty disgusting. <laughs> but, yes. Yeah. Um, I think the concept, uh, at first, it makes you feel like it's clutching at straws because you're like, oh, God, it's about worms. Like, really? That's that's what it's about. It's going to try and make something like Worms, the centerpiece for this like horror episode. Mm. And it's pretty it's pretty random, but then again, we've had an episode about a killer sponge, so <laughs> you can't really complain too hard. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, I think, look, it's obviously the idea at its core is kind of like silly, but it's a, a fun idea, and it gave me sort of like a B-movie type creature feature type 
horror thing going on which is cool and yeah i think it surprises you it's definitely hard to predict like where it's gonna go i think but as we mentioned before it does have a sort of like message about being nice to inoffensive creatures and yeah. uh because they may seek revenge upon you kind of thing because we've all heard of the kid that pulls the wings of the butterfly or the magnifying glass on the ants and things like that so it's like it's got a good little message about caring for the smaller things yeah i quite like that and i think it's something a lot of kids can relate to because uh, particularly of certain generations particularly of our generations growing up in uh, a more country location like ireland i fucked with a lot of worms when i was younger i know i did yeah yeah you know we've all had that thing about life you cut a worm in half like both halves will still keep like wriggling and things like that so it's kind of like there are a being that is kind of like preyed upon by humans in quite cruel ways so yeah they kind of got their own back with this episode which was interesting (laughs) yeah famously a major part of bait for fishing as well worms so that's very true they do tie into the whole fishing thing at the end as well so yeah they are just like victims in every way really <laughs> but um yeah that, like you said the ending is re- really stupid but it's quite like funny somehow he's getting he's like baited by the sandwich and like pulled off that's quite funny but shame they had to ruin it a little bit yeah, yeah it's just my overriding memory that ending is the when he picks the sandwich up but it's just a really clever b-movie style reveal as he picks it up mm. and he, he goes to bite in it and we see the line and you're like ah it's quite funny mm. um one of the things I really like about it is that it willingly did some of the grosser scenes involving worms and everybody was game for it. It's mm. a gross out episode in the fact that whether it's the amount of worms starting with a pulsating, having the one that's being um, cut open, the mm. face going to <clears throat> face first into them on a pillow and then having them all over his legs and feet, the falling backwards into a pit of them. All these kind of things are like, okay, credit to, I've, I, weirdly enough, for some reason, I forgot to put the cast in my notes for this one so that's why i didn't mention it but the kid actor the boy that is was brilliant he was really really good yeah yeah credit credit to him i can imagine he's like laying in the bed and he's like is that enough worms in the dark he's like no like no more worms more, more worms. worms yeah more worms. oh worms, I, wanted worms. To be, I wanted to be like the dm the, um, the 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 more cowbell fucking skit from mm. um, saturday night live i've had a you know we need more worms just coming in like that <laughs> just piling them on oh great yeah. stuff but what's also cool is that the sibling rivalry is not the focal point here. It is mm-hmm. actually takes a complete back, back, back seat to this and yeah. is only used really to get us to certain points in the story rather than being the story. Yeah, and I just yeah, it does te- I think it does also just teach you that valuable valuable lesson, which I don't think many goosebumps really have many lessons in them. So that's quite an interesting one for that. Agreed. This is a very strong one and it's great to run into a few in a row. You got any thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash gbhbl as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts and of course if you like this video do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?